Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on JavaScript and today we're going to be going a bit more into variables, strings, and a new topic, operators. So first let me differentiate the difference between uh, declaring a variable and initializing it because I did not do that in the last variable. When you type in bar, um, this is telling the browser, okay, you're creating a variable. Whatever comes next is the name of the variable. So I'll just type in x. That is declaring a variable. Initializing it is when you actually set it equal to something, a number, a string, or another variable. That is initializing it. Uh, what I was doing in the previous video, and I try to do this as much as I can, is declare and initialize at the same time. Ah, so at any time you can declare and initialize whatever you can uh, variables and you don't have to use them right away later in, later in your code I'd like to do that in your header file and believe it, or, believe it or not you can create as many script tags as you want they can read whatever you wrote in other script tags as long as it's in the same document so I can copy all of this go into my header file and paste it I can set x equals to 5 then I can create an alert box and put X in there. So I'll save and let's see what happens. The number five pops up. That's cool. Um, so yeah, so any time you can do this, it's because the header, the reason why I do this is because the header tags always are read first. When, when the browser is reading your document, it's reading it like a human would. It's going through like this, uh, unless there's like functions and these other things in there, but that's something you don't need to worry about yet, which, which could cause it to jump but uh, yeah it reads the head tags first logically and it will come across this first and basically it will make sure nothing will go wrong and that's about it uh, I would like to go over uh, something with strings r really quickly and that's what if you have quotes within quotes what if you want to have quotes in your string how do you go about doing that for example between these strings what if I say uh, Adam said quotes whoops within quotes and I click save when it's reading this everything in between the first two quotes is considered a string as you can see by the text it's grayed out but then after that it becomes black again well, that's because the second quote is saying okay that's the end of the string everything after that is something else well in order to change this you can use a special character. In this case, it's the backslash. And what it will do is treat the next character as a piece of string. So then find the second one and add a backslash there too. So when I click save and I refresh the page, it'll now say Adam said quotes within quotes. And it really means that. Quotes and, well, there's no other quotes, but you know what I mean. Uh, and yeah, that's about all I want to show you the strings. Now, let's get into a new topic, operators. So, I'm uh, the, the two types of operators I'm going to be discussing today are assignment operators and arithmetic operators. There's one assignment operator I want to show you first before I do the arithmetic, and then I'll finish up the rest of the assignment operators. So the first one is the equal sign. And basically all that does is set whatever is on the left equal to the right. A variable must always be on the left side. You cannot just have a number here or a string on this side and whatever on this side. It must be a variable. This side's different. You can have pretty much anything you want over here. You can have another variable on over here. You can have a string like we do here. And you can have a number. It does not matter. Okay. Now, uh, going back, now I'm going to digress to the arithmetic operators and that's basically math yep you can do math in here so uh, I'm gonna get into the more um, uh, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna work with strings first just because I have a string in here so I'm just gonna get rid of the string that I have in here and I'll say Adam said and let's do the basic plus sign first now notice how I leave a white space here and that's because I don't want the next string when it's concatenated together 
concatenation is the combination of m multiple strings to start right after that D. I want there to be a white space there. So then I'll put in a plus, and then I can have my second set of strings. So Adam said, um, I've been saying that a lot, so might, might as well speak the truth. So when I click save and refresh the page, now it says Adam said um. And notice we have our white space right between the D and the U, just like we wanted. So it looks like a normal sentence, ending with ellipses. Uh, and that's about uh, all I can show you with strings when it comes to arithmetic operators. Can't really subtract strings, that'd be kind of weird. Um, but yeah, let's set this equal to an actual number. So I'll say this would be 7. And let's create another variable called y equal to 2. Now, I could just do something as simple as 7 plus 2. And I'll just show that to you now to show you it works. 7 plus 2, x. Let's see what comes out. 9. I, I, I didn't, I'm pretty sure I didn't really have to show you that. That's so obvious. But I want to show you math between variables. So I'm going to create a third variable called total. And that's going to be equal to, and I like to use parentheses when I'm doing my math. And within these parentheses, I'll type in my variables. X plus Y. So I'll click Save. 7 plus 2. And i got to change my X in the alert box to the total variable. I'll click Save. And let's see what happens. Oh, the number 9 pops up. That's cool. And this is, yeah, this is really cool. We're going to be doing math. Love math. If you're a programmer, that automatically means you love math. So, if you, uh, if you, if up till now you didn't like math, too bad. You now do. All right. So, that's let's move on to some more operators. So that's adding. We can also subtract. I'll click save. Seven minus two. Let's see uh, how that pop uh, that comes out. Seven minus two is five. So that worked. What if we switch these around? Well, uh, what if we do 2 minus 7? What do you think would happen there? Do you think we'll get a negative number? Do you think JavaScript supports negative numbers? Mm, probably not. It does! Look at that! Negative 5! It really worked! It uh, works with negative numbers as well. Uh, you can also multiply. In order to multiply, use the asterisk symbol. So, the little star, as other people call it x times y. Let's see what we get here. 14. Wow, it worked. That's pretty awesome. Then there's the division. The division is the slash. Now, I'm gonna... Yeah, I should show you this first. Um, well, let's just see what comes out. I press F5, and there's a decimal. I don't, I don't really want to use decimals yet, but it does support decimals too. But let's go with perfect numbers for now. So 14 minus minus 2 should be a nice perfect 7. There, you, there we go. I, um, I didn't I didn't want to get into decimals yet because I wanted to introduce you to an operator that you might not be familiar with, and that's the modulus operator, or just mod for short. And that's a percentage sign instead. And what that does is it checks how many of one number fits in the other number and then it takes that remainder. The best example I could think of is, I don't know, 3,568 and we'll mod that by 1,000. So if you look at this, we'll see that there's three 1,000s in that number and then 568 is not divisible by 1,000. So that's our remainder. So if we click save, we should get 568 and we do. Uh, I, you know what, I'll go back to that 7 and 2 example that I was using before. Now I'll click save and let's see what we get for an answer. We get 1 for an answer and the reason for that is because there's three twos that can fit in this and then we have one left over that's not being used and that's the remainder. Uh, and that's about it for uh, arithmetic operators. Uh, there's now something called assignment operators that I'm going to get into. And basically, basically it's if you set one variable equal to this, 
What if I want to change that value with a future variable? So um, I'm going to set, I'm going to get rid of this. And basically, what you could normally do is like maybe you want this x to go up by 5. You could type in x plus 5, but why bother? I mean, I mean, why bother do this? Why even create a new variable? You actually don't even have to create a new variable. What you can do is just type in x plus equals 5. And what this does is it takes the original value of x and adds 5 and it equals that new value, basically. So this should now come out to 12. So I have to change the alert to an x. Save again. And let's see what number we get. Now we get 12. Oh, I think I got an email. And as you could have imagined, this works for the minus. And I'm really running out of time. Geez, I'm sorry about this. Uh, I'll just show you a quick example. So it works for subtracting. And it works for all the others as well. It works for multiplication, division, and the modulus as well. Uh, and yeah, that about wraps it up for assignment and arithmetic operators. And uh, I'll see you next time.